All right. Uh, good evening and welcome to Beginners Academy. Uh, we like we have a Zoom meeting uh, and um, we um, have a, a presentation about every other meeting. And tonight I'm giving it its uh, Beginner's Guide to J-Pole and Slim Jim Antennas. I'm uh, Greg Lane, N4KGL. Uh, so why would you want a J-Pole or a Slim Jim? Well, it's better than that rubber duck antenna on your HT. Uh, so should you have an HT and it doesn't work well in your house, you might want to use a J-Pole or Slim Jim, <laughs> either in the house or, or outside the house. Um, uh, you want to get on the repeaters or do simplex on two meters or uh, uh, 70 centimeters. Uh, you may be in HOA and you want a stealthy antenna. Uh, you might uh, operate portable um, and want to have a, a better antenna. Um, uh, J-poles are generally inexpensive. So this might be the first antenna that you get after you get licensed. Um, uh, and uh, you can build it yourself. So what is a J-Pole? Well, it's an in-fed omnidirectional half-wave antenna that's matched to the feed line by a short, shorted quarter-wave parallel transmission line stub. So uh that's pretty fancy talk there but uh lambda is a wavelength <laughs> so uh lambda changes uh it gets smaller as the frequency goes up so it's wavelength so that uh, very top section is a half wavelength um it turns out that uh when you excite a, um, a half wave antenna at the end, the end has a, uh, a high impedance that uh, won't max, match your coax, which is 50 ohms. So the antenna at the end might be 3,000, 4,000 ohms. So there is a, uh, a way to do that matching call which is this um, shorted quarter way parallel transmission line stub. <laughs> and uh, that's where you attach the coax and um, uh, you can uh, adjust uh, the position of the coax along those two tubes to uh, get the best match. All right, well, uh, the history of this, uh, uh, this uh, this antenna really started uh, with the Zeppelin airships, and uh, they uh, trailed an antenna behind the airship, uh, which had a half wave long uh, radiator. It was probably uh, pretty low frequency, so it would be pretty long. And then they used a quarter wave. Uh, parallel transmission line stub to match the antenna impedance to the feed line. So um, um, <clears throat> this basic idea for an antenna um, uh, began being used for land-based transmitters um, in 1936, it says. And um, uh, because of the shape of the antenna, uh, it, it was known as the J antenna. And um, when radiating half-wave section is mounted horizontally, uh, you can do the same trick, and it's called a ZEP antenna. So there's a, uh, if you study antennas, you'll hear about a, a a ZEP antenna and, and different variations of that. 
um, <clears throat> there's a related antenna uh, called the Slim Jim, and um, uh, it kind of has a halfway folded dipole in a sense. And uh, functionally, uh, it, it's pretty much the equivalent of the J-Pole. Uh, it turns out that if you use uh, twin lead, or I call it uh, sometimes a window uh, lead, <laughs> uh, it's two parallel wires in an insulator, uh, kind of like what we used for TVs. Uh, our TV antennas used to have a uh, twin lead uh, from the TV to the antenna. Well, that material... La ladder line, ladder line. Well, ladder line is another name for it. And um, so uh, still around for ham use. Well, anyway, a lot of the Slim Jims are roll-up antennas, and we'll see some pictures uh, as we go along. So... Uh, also, uh, by doing this little bit of research, uh, there's a lot about the name. <laughs> uh, the gem part is J integrated matching. Is it uh, so slim gem? All right, uh, we're not going to get really technical on the performance, but if you mount it vertically, it's omnidirectional. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of gain, and um, it's nothing like a Yagi. So um, there are antennas with much more gain, like Yagis and so forth, but uh, <clears throat> they're a little more expensive, a little more difficult to set up. And the radiation pattern to the right is hard to read, but being a vertical, uh, there's not any radiation straight up, and and we don't need any. <laughs> um, so um, <clears throat> uh, the antenna would be somewhat in the middle of this diagram, and uh, this view would be uh, into a cert all the way around the antenna. So. So it, it's basically uh, a vertical. Um, it doesn't radiate at really low angles. So it's not the perfect antenna, but um, I found it uh, useful. Uh, the construction uh, can be uh, uh, copper or aluminum tubes or as we mentioned, a twin lead or window line uh, for the Slim Jim. Uh, the Slim Jim can roll up for portable use. Uh, the size of a J-Pole depends on what band uh, you're building it for. And the two meter version is 58 inches for the longest element. Um, a RF choke is uh, recommended, and that choke can be a few turns of coax uh, uh, <clears throat> just under the antenna. So uh, if you Google Slim Jim or JPO, you'll find some uh, construction articles. Um, and um, um, <clears throat> I have some of the materials, if anybody needs it, some of the uh, window line I have. Okay, well, how would you deploy? Well, just about any of which way you can think of. <laughs> uh, you could hang one on the wall. I wouldn't run a lot of power through it, but if you must have an indoor antenna, you could hang it on the wall. You can hang it from a tree. <laughs> Uh, I've done that uh, when I'm out portable. Uh, I use fiberglass telescoping poles, and I've attached one to the top and um, put the pole up uh, at field day um, so I, I can get a uh, J-pole, a roll, well, a Slim Jim, actually, 
up about 25 feet. Of course, you may set up various kinds of poles at your house, uh, masts, um, uh, a non-conductive pole may be the best, but metal poles are going to work too. And last but not least is to mount one in your attic. And uh, I've got one in Dothan in the attic uh, that I've used for years. So, well, if you, uh, well, you can find those construction articles, but you can also do a search on eBay. And there's a <clears throat> uh, N9TAX uh, has been a supplier uh, of uh, different uh, versions of the Slim Jim and so forth. Also, KB9VBR. Uh, he's a big YouTube presence also. <laughs> and uh, Ed, Ed Fong, who is famous. <laughs> Now that's not Ed, Ed Fong on the left, but that is uh, one of his antennas that is basically a Slim Jim, but it's inside a PVC pipe. So I have a Slim Jim, which you see in this picture. Uh, the little white lead there is is the twin lead uh, it has a little choke on it the coax is the skinny 174 coax well i put this in my backpack uh it's much smaller when you roll it all up and uh, takes almost no room in my backpack and if i want um an antenna uh uh, for two meters, maybe to work some simplex for radar, then um, um, I pull this out and hang it from a from a tree limb or whatever I can get to. Could probably lay it on a bush and it would work too. So this is just the first of many Slim's gems <laughs> uh, that I have uh, for different purposes. Um, the one on the left is a similar antenna, just a different color. And uh, this is the QTH here in Dothan. And it's just uh, hanging from the eave or whatever you want to call the wood there. And the lead goes in a window. And uh, uh, probably nobody's ever going to notice uh, that particular antenna. And um, uh, that's all I need to get into the repeater and things like that. Uh, uh, actually, I have it hooked to a digipeter right now. It's not the greatest antenna for that digipeter, but um, it's uh, what I've got because <laughs> on the right, it's hard to see, but I have a, a line uh, just a, a cord between two pine trees and I pulled up a Slim Jim there and the coax is running down. Um, uh, that one is the 450 ohm. In fact, it's a N9TAX Slim Jim and um, I've got it, uh, I'm using it for uh, Echolink. So I kind of gave it's the higher antenna, so I gave Echolink priority over the Digipeter. And interesting, these antennas are basically one above the other. So I'm uh, actually able to use uh, both of them at the same time. Because they don't, they have very little radiation <laughs> uh, uh, through the top and out the bottom. All right. Well, uh, the J pole in Panama, my Panama City attic, uh, I use for Echo Link and two meters in general. And uh, uh, <clears throat> it's one you'll find at Hamfest. I bought this one at a Hamfest. Um, it's a little different construction. Uh, somehow they figured out how to make it simple. 
and I think it's aluminum tubes and uh, I just have it set up in the attic. All right, we're missing somebody. All right, well, here's my favorite J-Pole. It is a 10 meter J-Pole, which 10 meters is 28 point, or 20, it's built for 28.4 um, megahertz, 10 meters, and uh, it's 25 feet long. And uh, it, it's a great antenna. I've worked, uh, uh, um, Australia, New Zealand, and all that. It also comes in handy working around Panama City. I'm trying to admit somebody, but I can't. <laughs> can't find my cursor. I know how they feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, if anybody wants to build that particular uh, 10 meter uh it's not a slim gym it's a jpo uh these are the plans and i share these plans with marv and some other people in the club and we all build them and we all really enjoyed them all right well um of course, the internet is a wealth of information about J-Poles. Uh, there's a J-Pole calculator. Uh, so you put in the frequency and it will give you the dimensions. Uh, I've got a link there. Uh, there are uh, Ed Fong's J-Pole antennas. There's a site separate from eBay that carries those. And uh, actually at the bottom, uh, I found a YouTube, How J-Poles Work. Uh, so there's a lot of analysis on the J-Pole by Ed on YouTube. And uh, one of the uh, antenna experts who's a uh, silent key is uh, uh, Mr. Siebeck. And he wrote an uh, article, What is a Slim Jim? And... Uh, he covers a lot of the technical nuances um, about the Slim Jim and the j pole So in summary, uh, a j pole or Slim Jim is a simple way to get on the bands uh, for 10, 6, 2 meters. Uh, now, all these... Um, two meter slim gems that I've shown you will also work on 70 centimeters. It may not be the greatest 70 centimeter antenna, but, but it will, um, the SWR is low enough for you to use it. And instead of a half wave, that longer uh, element would be a one and a half, I think one and a half wave <laughs> or three halves wave. That's right. Um, so these can be built uh, for uh, a lot of different bands. Uh, you can buy them. There are many ways to deploy them. Uh, uh, you can probably uh, 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 hide them from the HOA. <laughs> and... Um, uh, there's different opinions about the performance, but all I know is when I set one up, I can get on the repeater. Um, I've also got one for six meters, and I've worked Brazil and South America and so forth uh, with it. And that is our uh, presentation tonight. Uh, but uh, our Zoom attendees uh, may have some comments about uh, j poles and slim gyms and uh, you're welcome to share i built one mm -hmm. i didn't know it was called a slim gym <laughs> <laughs> yes it's officially a slim gym <laughs> yeah i just called it a a j pole but it was the twin lead 300 ohm one and uh used it several years to great advantage we were moose hunting way south on the lake lake of the woods almost into the united states minnesota actually 
and uh, no cell coverage. Well, cell phones weren't that big back in that day anyhow, but even if they were, there's not much coverage way down there. And our repeater at the time had a uh, auto patch. So we could actually call up to the repeater 30 miles up the lake, I think, and uh, and dial a number and, and call you know the guy's wives and stuff, including my wife, and let, a, let them know that we're still alive from day to day because we're out there for over a week. And then when we finally got a moose, we arranged for a, a truck to meet us at the at the landing to offload the moose when we arrived. So it, it was valuable machine. Um, the the rubber ducky did not cut the mustard at all, but the Slim Jim worked wonderfully. And I think the last year I pulled it out to use it, it had gotten wet the year before. And I did a test in my living room to make sure it's still working. And I hit transmit. I had it hung up in a doorway. And all of a sudden, my wife and I start smelling uh, plastic smoke, burning uh -huh. plastic. So the, the rule, I think, that I learned there was either insulate that that little one inch gap really really well or don't try to insulate it at all and leave it open to dry we did i kind of had a half done uh, electrical tape around it and water got in the previous year and, and never got out and then when i hit it with some <laughs> even just five watts i think it was the a year later it started cooking so uh, it was nothing to build another one but uh, that's my uh, that's my two cents worth uh, greg awesome thank you chris Anybody else using a J-Pole or got some experience with them? I've got Come that my TAX version that I keep rolled up in my Go box. So it's great uh, to use when you're portable because it's simple and you give you those UHF and VHF bands. Easy. Yeah. And great for emergencies too. Yeah. Yeah, Most in fact... I was reading an article and it called it the emergency antenna. Yeah. You put a, a long string and a tennis ball or a rock on the end and just chuck it over a branch and away you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, Greg, on that first one that you showed where it had the half wavelength and then there was a quarter wavelength on the bottom for the stub. Yeah. And you had the coaxial there. How, how do you know where to put the coaxial on that part to match the impedance? Uh, trial and error. Oh, okay. Just well, Plugging. they'll they'll probably give you a suggested uh, dimension for that. But uh, uh, if you do have some kind of antenna analyzer or uh, SWR meter, I know the club has one. You you can check check it, and if necessary, you can move the connection. Um, uh, so chances are, if you get an article, they'll have a suggested. Can yeah. I share? Can I share? Dimension? Yes. That, that, well, that... Uh, let oh, me. Oh, you're uh, still you're still rolling. No. I just need to click a button. Okay. Here we Sorry, go. Sorry, Frank. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, I built uh, those J poles and even five H collinear J poles, and I've always uh, uh, made it so that. Uh, um, that's, you can slide that up and down because it's hard to predict. Uh, if, if it's like a standard uh, ladder line, you can almost predict it, but I've made them on PVC, different uh, diameter PVCs. And of course, the shield always goes on the short length and the center goes on the long length. Uh, and uh, usually about an inch and a half on the two meter from the bottom up, but it, it can vary. Uh, you slide it up and down until you get your flattest WR. So makes makes it so you could slide it up and down, then you solder it as you find the sweet spot. This is the one okay. I this is the one I built, the 300 ohm one. And it's it's four inches up from the bottom, but it's different than what Frank is mentioning with pipe. And it worked really well. And this is where I had tape around it around this gap here. Don't do that. Well, or if you do, do it well. Maybe use that electrical uh paste on. What do they call that? The liquid tape? I had better luck with that, but it, it works slick. And you this you tweak the ends together and solder them at the top, and that gives a convenient place to tie your your quarter inch parachute cord or what have you. And then, like I said, a tennis ball and a rope, and away you go. It's a very versatile little antenna. You know, that's the one I built, and and all this time I didn't know it was a slim jim. 
<laughs> Learn something every day. You can uh, you can tick that off your bucket list now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> I've, um, when I went when I started going to Puerto Rico, I found out that two meters down there is very important. Uh, they they really rely on that a lot. In fact, the whole the whole island is linked with various different repeaters uh, on different mountaintops. And with a little two meter walkie talkie, you can talk all the way across the island. Different clubs uh, uh, set up, uh, they, they they find dead spots and then they have clubs who volunteer to, to, to activate that dead spot. Uh, and uh, I've, in Puerto Rico, when when the storms hit, uh, you know, materials can't get in there. Uh, and uh, you can't, there's not too many radio shacks you can buy anything from. So you had to make things, whatever was laying around. And I and I found that you always have PVC all over the place and you always have electrical wire. So I started teaching them how to make a J-pole uh, on, a, on a three quarter inch uh, diameter PVC. Uh, you, um, you, cut the, uh, you cut a piece of number 12 wire and you basically, uh, then you drill a hole at uh, the bottom and you feed it through and you make your lower section of the J pole and then the other part goes up. And the very tip, uh, you pinch it under a cap. You got a cap on the top. You let the tip be, and then you pound the tap, uh, the cap and pinch it in there. Uh, then you, uh, then you uh, put a couple of tie wraps on it. I also found out that tie wraps have an effect on the, on, the, on the match. So don't put too many tie wraps on there. Because the tie, the tie wraps do affect uh, the match. Uh, one of the things I found on there that became really popular was a five eighths quarter wave, uh, no, a five eighths collinear J pole. And if I could share, I could show you a picture of one. You can, yes. Basically, um, these are all the dimensions from the top to here. That's five eighths. Then you have a, a, a you have a, a here uh, like a like here. This goes out like that. That's three quarters, three eighths, right? Your three eighths wavelength. Then you come down another uh, uh, five eighths, and then you have a half wave down here like this, down and back up. Uh, and then, so this is three quarter inch PVC uh, and the wire could be, uh, they're using a different kind of wire, but I found out that uh, if you use a thicker wire, uh, your, your bandwidth is wider. Uh, I, I, I was using number 12, but to start off by, uh, you take the PVC and you mark off these dimensions here. Uh, you start here, you mark that off and you drill a little hole there. Then you then there's a, a an inch separating there. Then you come down another down here. Then this is a 15 inch, 115 inches from the very top. And you drill there, and then you back up. So here, the, uh, so what you do is you bring your wire through. Here. What I do is I make a big. Um, I take uh, the um, the wire and I stretch it out real tight. Uh, and make it straight as I can. Then I make like a big loop. And, and then feed both ends through here and bring it bring it down so that the loop is this dimension here. Then uh, I bring this down here, bring this through here and then back up. Uh, and then I just put a cap on here to pinch that off. And then I'll put a few wire ties here and there. Or uh, sometimes you can even uh, crazy glue the, the wire to the BBC. Um, and then... Uh, and then at the bottom, if you go over here, you can see that. Uh, let's see if I can move this. Well, anyway, down here you can see how you um, you put that uh, uh, the choke on the bottom. I, I can't see it here. Can you see it here? Yeah. The bottom. You make a, uh, you three make turns of coax. Bottom. Yeah. 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 So uh, basically, this is ends up being a five eighths. Uh, collinear, and what that does is it, it makes you more flat as it goes out horizontally. Instead of it, it, it makes it actually even flatter, so it gives you it gives you a gain. 
Uh, it ends up being a big antenna. I mean, it ends up being, uh, I think, about 10 feet. But it, it's very, very effective. And I also found out that it will work on, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on 440 also. For some reason or other, it'll match on 440 as well. But this this you can just find it on the side. Look up for 5 8 collinear uh, J-pole on PVC, and you'll get this image. And uh, so that's about it. Yeah. How do I, how do I get out of how do I get out of sharing here? Uh, we'll stop bottom, sharing. Bottom right. <laughs> yeah, there you got it. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's that's another version of the J-pole, but that's yeah. Fine. That's five eighths instead of half, which will give you a little flatter takeoff. Yeah, thing. yeah, it, it's like a that ends up being like a like a horizontal dipole. So it's effective. You no, know, in effect, that's what it is. But I, that that really gets out up there. Um, yeah, yeah, you have to uh, um, make make all the, the dimensions of the lengths as accurate as you can. And then at the bottom, you slide that the coax uh, up and down until you get a good match, and then you solder it in place. Awesome. Yeah. And you save a lot of money by building it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alf, do you have anything? <laughs> okay. I, I, that's well, I get mine off eBay. I brought, I <laughs> yeah, uh, most of mine are off eBay, but I built that ten meter one, uh, and uh, still have it. Yeah. How much do they cost, roughly speaking, bus? Uh, if you time it right, about sixty bucks. They're not bad. That's a copper version. Is that is that like a poles or is this a slim jim type of thing? It's gas line that dude is. <laughs> Made couplers for you can break it down, unscrew it, put it in a little satchel, carry it with you. Oh, nice! But, yeah, uh, yeah, it stands about sixty inches when you get it yeah. all together. The uh, roll-up ones probably thirty to forty dollars. The Slim Jims, but you know it depends. But yeah, that uh, you would you would imagine that that three turns on the bottom isn't enough to make a difference but it does make a big difference uh without that uh, three turns on the bottom when you move the coax around it actually affects the match mm. so by uh, that that decouples it. it it kills the current coming down on, on around right the coax. yeah so um it's something to think about particularly if you don't have any antennas around your home <laughs> and you need one, um, uh, th these are good candidates. So, particularly for HOAs, <clears throat> you can put one in the attic if you can get in the attic. So, awesome. Well, I appreciate everyone's attention tonight and uh, the uh, sharing uh, here. Uh, so, uh, anything before we uh, sign off? Yeah, I just go ahead. Uh, that's my forty meter loop right there. Okay, like, in, inside the house, I'm, I still haven't quite got it finished. Oh, okay, it'll cool. it'll go forty, thirty, and twenty. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and that's it looks big. nice against your French doors. You can see how big it is. That's a big <laughs> almost that's... at the ceiling. <laughs> does does your but wife comes, have to jump through it to get out into the backyard now? But it comes down. Well, I can actually walk through it. Uh, <laughs> it comes apart. It's got, uh, put together with wing nuts so it can come apart for easy transport. I wouldn't exactly say easy put back together, but uh, you can put it back together. I'll take yeah. that to Huntsville. Maybe it'll be a, uh, <laughs> an attention getter. I imagine. Take two impressive. people to move it. <laughs> Yeah. Are you going to sell it? I, you just built it. Yeah, I'm going to sell it if somebody wants to buy it, yeah. Have you used it yet? Uh, I've used it on the uh, analyzer. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a gamma match. I don't know if you can see. If you look up at the top left, you'll see I've got a, a, a no-capacitor gamma match. 
So for 40 meters, it's matched almost at the bottom left. You can see there where the gamma match. Can you see it? No. That's pretty pretty long, pretty long match. I had to I actually had to extend it twice to, to get, you know, SWR down one to something or another. Well, you, you and Frank get, don't want to hold on to stuff very long, do you? Yeah, well, the, those uh, <laughs> those little loops you put in there, they're not adjustable. You know, you can't do it. But with this gamma match, which uh, I finally mastered, I've tried it several times, but I got it right this time. It's very well, easy. Well, and, 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 just for, and just for convenience, well, I'm feeding the match with the, <laughs> with the ground side of the coax because it's more convenient than trying to hook up the center conductor there. Does that make any difference? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going well, to. Uh, that way, half the time, anyway. I'm going to sign 